turn your attention to the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord here today. To each and every one of our visitors that have taken time to be with us, we're honored that you would be here at Calvary with us. We bless you and greet you in the name of the Lord. We're so thankful to our home folks and saints. We bless you. It's good to be together worshiping God today. Uh, I do want to say a special thank you and uh, welcome to friends of ours, the Carsons. You heard that right. The Carsons are here with us, evangelists and uh, uh, great individuals for the kingdom of God. We honor them so very much. They are a tremendous blessing to the kingdom of God. Somebody wondered if we were related. They said that about his father, uh, and then they're asking that about us. We're, we're just related in the body of Christ. He's got a powerful last name. It's, uh, we're glad, glad to have them with us here today and to everyone that's in God's house. All right, Matthew chapter 9. They're coming around at this time. They're going to be handing out pencils. Don't let it be a distraction to you. Just take a pencil if they haven't. Yeah, here they come with stacks of pencils. If you already got one, you don't, you don't need another one. But if you haven't got one, they're going to pass them out until they're gone. These are great. We thank God for these great young men that are helping us right here, right now, taking these bundles. But don't worry. They'll get to you when they get to you. We're going to look at verses 9 through 13. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew. Everyone say Matthew. Come on. Say Matthew. Say it with a little question in your book. Matthew? Yeah. He was sitting at the receipt of custom. He said unto him, follow me. That's what Jesus told him. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, oh, they weren't happy. So they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I want to preach what has been in my spirit for some time. I believe heaven's assignment for this hour. It's been upon me. And I would do it using somewhat of a modern narrative, at least aesthetically in look on the slide, I would do what would be a break in our English language because we do it in text all the time. I'd like to use an exclamation point and a question mark. And I'd like to preach from this statement question he called Matthew. He called Matthew, turn to two or three people and ask them and say it just a little bit disgusted if you're willing to play along. He, he called Matthew. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for this great singing, our worship leading by Sister Galleon and this team, these great musicians and this choir that has done their best to lead us in worship into the presence of God. Move in this house. Do what only you can do. If the Holy Ghost will help us, then there's no telling what might happen here among us today. I pray that you would anoint these lips that they might speak your word with wisdom and clarity under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Help me to somehow do justice to your word. I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. And let everybody in the building shout amen. amen. And you may be seated here today. What a frustrating and seemingly unfruitful beginning when those fishermen hear of the newest addition. It can't be accurate, can't be true. Surely 
we've heard incorrectly, but the eyes would confirm what the ears have heard. And I hear it as a question and an exclamation all the same. It riddles throughout those that are gathered both silently and possibly even audibly. He called Matthew. Matthew, the one whom Mark and Luke would be much more comfortable to referring as Levi, Matthew would be called. And in order for those here today to fully appreciate the text, we need to understand where Matthew was when he was called. For the Bible says that he was seated at the table of custom. He was the collector of taxes. This is very different than the IRS. That is a different message. But he is the collector of finances. Brother Turner, he worked in allegiance with the Roman government. As someone in today's age might be seen more as a financial subcontractor. And he would look at an area, at a particular region, city, number of individuals, families. And he, working with the Roman government, denouncing his own faith and a seeming abolishment to his own identity, he would work with the Roman government on behalf of these people. And he would look at a section, a group of households, and he would determine for a very simple illustration, he said, this, this group, these families right here, they owe a 1,000 to the Roman government. So he would go and he would establish a bill as a subcontractor with the Roman government that for this region and for this area, he would present a 1,000 on behalf of this group. He would collect those taxes, and it was the obligation of those Jewish people who felt like they were under the iron fist of Roman leadership to pay said taxes. Trying to avoid taxation has been around a long time. But he would get them to sign off that a thousand was good for this area. But then as he worked on each one and each area and each household, he would build that number just a little bit. And hopefully by the time that he was done, it might be 1,200 or 1,300 or even 1,500. And that thousand that was promised as a note to the Roman government would be given to them. But the lucrative living would be from the remaining, the taxing of his own people and the election. He was worthy of his hire after all. That's how it was felt. And so he would take that money. He would pay them what they were due and he would live on the rest. He would burden his own people so that he might live a lavish lifestyle and his people hated him for it. He was disdained by his people. In fact, we who are believers, we know the gospel. And so we know that Judas had no business with the money bag. But amongst these disciples, the most qualified individual to handle money would have been Matthew. But because of his past, it was hard to let him have a present. Living in a place where Judas is more trusted with money than Matthew is what happens when it's hard to fathom that Christ can actually call someone from where they are to where he wants them to be. And so with that understanding and that recognition of what's taking place as he sits at the seat of custom, I need you to know that God was not confused with his plan for Matthew's life. God was not enamored or overwhelmed. He was not bothered nor beaten down. He, he was not uh, in any way uh, overwhelmed at the thought that he could use Matthew. And so seated there at the table of 
custom. I, I need everybody in the building to hear me very clearly. Matthew is in a place that no one else realizes right now. Matthew is probably living the most lavish lifestyle he has ever lived to this point. His finances are most likely greater than they have ever been. But no one but Matthew knows, even with all that I have, there's an emptiness on the inside of me. And all that it took, Brother Trano, all I heard your yeah, yeah stick out from the crowd, so I'm going to pick on you for a second. All that it took was Jesus walking by to look at a man who everybody would even call a backslider and would call a backstabber and would call alienated. That's all he needed was Jesus to walk by and say, I know everybody sees the money, but I see the emptiness. And I, I know that everybody sees you as a cheater, but I think you've got purpose in you. I, I I think you've got value in me. And so all it took was two words at the right time. Follow me. And I can hear the screeching of the chair and the pushing of the table as Matthew stood up and that chair pushed back. I, I tried to see his eyes. What did his eyes look like when he heard that move through his ears and get into his spirit when Jesus said, follow me. He pushed up from the table and said, okay, I'm going to do it. And he, he left his he left his table and he left his chair and he begins to follow after Christ because here's the secret. Jesus can call whoever Jesus wants to call. Jesus can use whoever Jesus wants to use. Whether you got a whether you got a rugged past or a perfect past, whether you look like you got it all together or you don't look like you got it all together, I wonder if there's anybody else in the building that's glad one day he walked by your pew and said, follow me. He, he walked by your family and said, follow me. Somebody preached a tent revival to your great-grandfather and said, follow me. And they they. They walked away from anything and everything to follow Jesus. Thank God that we walked away from other religions and other customs and other ideologies and other social status. Take the whole world. Give me Jesus. That's what we need. We need a good old revival of take it all. Take the fortune. Take the fame. Take the title. Take the job. Take the house. Take the car. Take all of it if you got to have it. But give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Come on, does that still burn in your soul? Does that still get deep inside of you? Say, I'll take him over any of it. I'll take him over the fame. I'll take him over the luxuries. I'll take him over the world's. Come on over the world's favor, over the world's opinion. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. No, I will not apologize that I run in church. Give me Jesus. No, I will not apologize that I dance in the house. Give me Jesus. No, I will not back up on my beliefs. Give me Jesus. And whether he called you from the pig pen or the table of custom, thank God he called you. Does I got I got something to say here today. The fact that he called you means it shouldn't matter who doesn't like that he did. I was telling this message to somebody. And I'm saying, man, I don't, I don't think the disciples like Matthew. And they said to me very kindly, like in the chosen. To which I said, no, like in the Bible. <laughs> they asked me, haven't you seen that? I said, no, I haven't seen it. I will tell you. Today's message is not inspired by any film director. Today's message, and I'm okay. Listen, I'm not taking shots at that. I'm telling you what I am taking shots on, though. I'm taking shots on the thought or the ideology that you got to be in everybody else's favor for him to call you or believe in you or want to use you or want to trust you. But if he calls you, you got to give up on worrying who likes it 
And who doesn't like it? You've been called to be a worshiper. You've been called to be a one God server. You've been called to be faithful by the faithful of they. I'll say yes. Easy to sing, hard to do. Easy to sing. A little bit harder when family's making fun of you for going to church three times a week. A little bit harder when your co-workers don't understand why you won't live the way you used to live. A little bit harder. I'm going to tell you when it's tough. It's tough when you say, I just got faith in a word from God. I just got faith in a word from God and haven't seen it materialize. All you need to know is that if he calls you, if he calls you, he can use you. Now, I'm going to tell you, the calling, the calling of those four guys now as Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and Andrew, their brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Straightway, when he got a little farther than this, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and he called after them. And they, that's awesome. Because he's about to say, I'm going to make you become. If, if that don't preach good, nothing preaches good. You don't have to be able to preach to use that title and say he's going to take fishers and make them fishers of men. Wow. What do you say to a tax collector? <laughs> what do you tell a guy that's been robbing the people you came to save? I didn't come for you to rob the people. But I did come to rob you from the clutches of sin. I didn't. I don't want you to keep. I don't want you to keep the table. That's what Jesus is looking at here and wants everybody else to see. How enticing is the table? Only, only you know your bank account. How enticing is the table? How enticing is the title? Now Listen. If you're sitting out here and you say, I don't think Pastor Carson wants us to be well off. I do. I want you to be blessed. If you're doing what you're called to do. I need you to know, though, you can be a billionaire and a witness. But, but you can't be a thief and a witness. And Matthew had to decide at that moment if he was either going to keep stealing from the people or if he was going to steal the call from himself. But he decided he could cash in both with one response. And so he just got up. There's a lot to be said about just standing up. I don't think I heard Jesus right because... Jesus eased by Matthew's table. I thought I heard him say, follow me. The amen to that call was in the posture of a publican when he stood up. That's why you can give the enemy of your soul a bad day when you respond to the word. I'm up here preaching, doing everything I can. And I say a point that resonates with you every now and then. Somebody say, amen. Amen. And every now and then, sometimes guests don't understand it because I'll be up here yelling, screaming, preaching, giving it all I got. And out of nowhere, somebody stand up. How many been in service where somebody called Give it. What are you doing? I'm remembering. He called Matthew from a table. But he called me out of darkness. He called them off of the bank. He called them out of the boat. He called him out of the table. He might have called you off of a bar stool. He might have called you out of your own. 
I don't know what he called you from, but I do know he called you out of sin. I do know he called you out of serving yourself. And he said, follow me, follow me, follow me. And I want everybody to know I made up my mind. I'm going to follow him. I want the devil to know I'm going to follow him. I want the doctors to know I'm going to follow him. I want those that like me to know and those that don't like me to know. I want those that believe in me and those that don't believe in me. But most of all, I want Jesus to know. You said follow, and I said yes. You said follow. Somebody shout yes. Yes. How about this? No music, no lyrics, no keys, just a yes. Don't sing it, just say it. One, two, three. Weak. Average. It was okay if we weren't at Calvary. And it was okay if there hadn't been a Calvary. But most of you, maybe not all of you, but a bunch of you, you're here in spite of the fact that other people in your life told you not to go to Bible college, told you not to follow your call. Where's our campus pastor? I can't imagine how many stories you know, stories that were similar to mine when somebody tried to convince them, don't you follow the call. The call's going to leave you broke, busted, and disgusted. But when you get a yes, if hell... If hell had its way, how many of these seats would be empty? Come on, Coxie. If if, if, if hell had a way, how many of you girls wouldn't be in here? Sit down. Sit down. If hell had its way, you wouldn't be able to zoom the choir in on her face. This would be a blank spot right here. If hell had its way, sit down. If hell had its way, this would be a blank chair. Sit down, Noah. If hell had its way, that'd be a blank chair right there. If hell had its way, your seat would be blank too. There wouldn't be anybody. In fact, there's people right now. Hell tried to convince you don't even come to church today. He tried to convince you God doesn't have anything left for your family. God doesn't have anything left for you. But I'm telling you, he's still saying, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I know it's 2024. Follow me. Get up from the table. Push the chair Follow me. Come on, Marco. There's nothing better. There's nothing greater. There is no call more. There is no call more deserving than the call follow me. Somebody lift your hands and lift your voice and say yes, 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 yes. I don't care if you own the business or push the broom. Give him your yes. I don't care if you drive a big car or ride the bus. Give him your yes. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you live on. Give him your yes. Brother Muse, there's no way he called Matthew. Here's what I think. I think it's hidden there. I think it's hidden and it's understood. Leave the table. Leave the chair. But keep that pen. Keep that pen that you've been using and figuring out how to cheat your own people. And I'm going to let you do some recording of how I came to cheat death, hell, and the grave. I'm gonna let, I want you to take that... Matthew, I put giftings in you. You're able to see numbers like nobody else. You're able to figure out how to work a deal. I want you to do some recording of your own. In fact, I'm going to let them turn. I'm going to let them turn thousands of years from now to a book with your namesake on it. I know they don't even want you at the party. You know they didn't want him in the room. Mark 5, or, or, or Mark and Luke 5. It's Luke 5, where they talk about the banquet. Brother Gay. They barely called him. They bar- he barely calls Matthew, and Matthew says, okay, follows after him. The next verse in Luke 5, he throws a banquet. I can picture those disciples. I bet you do have money to throw a banquet. Look at all the food. 
they couldn't enjoy the blessings because they couldn't get over the past. And you better be careful, and I better be careful, that God's not trying to put people on our team. Here's how I know there's a fence in their heart. The Pharisees don't speak to Jesus. They speak to the disciples. Brother Chris, they come to the disciples and say, why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? Eat with them. He just called one of them. You know, it's a pretty small group. Jesus hears it. Jesus, infinite in wisdom, understands they got some, they're in their own little valley of indecision right now. So he answers what they're not prepared to. Brother Grant, in this moment, he gives them an answer that's going to trump time. I didn't come for the righteous. You know what he was saying? You people that think you got it all figured out, you don't understand. I didn't come for those that were healed. I came for the sick. I came for the... You got to be kidding me. That's not Matthew. Matthew's not sick. Just because he's got money, he's sick. His soul is sick. Jesus, how do you know what he'll say? What he'll do with the call is up to him. But I'm going to call him. I'm going to tell him to follow me. Go in your Bibles. I'm done. Stand. Just stand. I'm, I've preached long enough. Go in your Bibles with me, if you will. Let's put them on the screen. I'm going to read through them fast. Woo, God. Somebody shout yes. yes. Matthew chapter 6. I've tried to work through it this week and try to understand again how, 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 how. How must he have felt? When inspired by the Holy Ghost, he would be pinned to author. Whew. He called Matthew. Oh, Matthew's good with a pen. Inspired. I have wondered if salty tears poured from his eyes and dripped down off of his cheeks. While he had to help author even words from Christ. Lay not up for yourself treasures of hope. I wondered if, if he saw the faces. You know, we, we often talk of Paul when he was saw of Tarsus moving through and tormenting people. I wonder if Matthew saw faces. Those he had cheated, those he had hurt. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20, but lay up, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. How must he have felt at the words of Christ when he said, For where your treasure is. I don't know if you can hear it today, but I can hear the screeching of the chair. I can see the ledger flapping in the wind. I can see the concern of taxation of days gone by. And I can hear the whispered disdain of those in the room he called Matthew surely not Matthew but I've come to remind us the fact that he called Matthew the fact that he used Matthew he can use you he can use you why don't you elbow your neighbor right now and tell him he wants to use you Elbow somebody else and tell him he's still saying, follow me. Throw your hands towards heaven. Singers come.
Go to Matthew 28 with me. Matthew 28. Jesus came, spake unto them, saying, All power is given. How must, Lord, how must that have felt when being recorded? What about all the people that seemingly had authority that would have felt like Matthew had no place in the kingdom? Nobody in the kingdom and nobody in the earth, nobody in fact in heaven or earth, whether angelic or... No one's got the power that he's got for all power. And think about that. He had to reconcile in his mind, Merrick, that the one with all power said to him, follow me. That's why you're singing. You don't get to do this because mom and dad do it. You got to do it. You don't get to do this just because grandma or grandpa did. No, no. Following is up to you. Following is up to me. And he told him, so go ye therefore. Teach all nations. Somebody say all nations. I wonder if Matthew knew this guy who no one thought. If most people would have got the chance Pastor Lopez, they just said, sit down, Matthew. Don't you follow him. I know what he said, but you don't deserve this. I wonder if Matthew would have known with the power of that pen and the precise call of Christ that what he would have been embarking in, even when he penned this very, whether it be in Aramaic or Greek or however you read it, we only see it in the context of English. But that word right there, that right there, that scripture, that that book right there at least to date has been translated into 1,638 other languages. Go ye therefore teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always. Even to the end, we were sitting in a meeting at IBC. Our pastoral team was gathered there. We were fresh in a time of prayer and devotion. And in walked a younger missionary. I say younger because he's my age. He walked in, and I didn't know. I think, I think maybe Brother Gallion knew already. I don't know who else. I, we, we weren't expecting him. I knew what I was about to share with that team, Brother Quillen. They walked in, and he said, we've been, we've been appointed to go to French Polynesia. But then he gave me a stat that I didn't know never heard it. I didn't understand it. He said, we've never had an established Pentecostal work, never been a UPCI church that's been established there. He said, but God's called us. And I know it's not of comfort. It's a call of God, but he's asked us and we've said, yes. Well, I started crying. I started weeping when he told me when it comes to miles, where we're going is the farthest in miles from Jerusalem of anywhere in the world. I thought the scripture. Matthew, if you got to hear him call, everybody deserves to hear him call. Here I am. A man in my mid-40s with the privilege to preach to you wonderful people here today. But today I feel like a young boy again hearing him say, follow me. 
And I want him to know he gets my yes today as much as he got my yes years ago. Why the pencil, Pastor? This pencil ought to represent that your giftings are different than somebody else's, but you got a story to tell. And you got a testimony to share. Your testimony is probably a little different than your neighbor's. What he needs you to record is probably a little different from somebody a couple of sections away, but he didn't call you to be them and he didn't call them to be you. He didn't call Matthew to be Simon Peter any more than he called him to be James or John. No, he called him to be exactly who he needed him to be. When you read the Gospels and you understand the perspective and the inspiration of the Spirit and why they were written the way they were written, you understood that they were ministering to particular audiences. And I'm telling you that God has audiences for you that he does not have for your neighbor. Most of you are going to walk into a cubicle tomorrow and you might feel overwhelmed. You might walk onto a construction site and you feel overwhelmed. You might walk into your job at, at the bank or at Lilly or some corporate building. Or you, you, Somebody might log in from home onto a Zoom meeting with other people digitally on a screen before you and you don't feel like you got much. But I'm telling you, as long as you got a yes... And that's my question here today. Do you still have a yes? Because with all the disdain of that question topic for today, he called Matthew. As backslidden as he was, Island, as far as he had gotten when it came time, Matthew didn't have a great reputation, but he had a yes. He didn't have a lot of friends left in that community amongst the Jewish brethren, but he had a yes. Would you lift your hands towards heaven? I'm done. <laughs> Somebody that feels the tug of God on your heart whether you're a young person or an aged elder in the room, but you feel <laughs> you've been drinking coffee in the morning with some people at McDonald's that need to hear your story. Oh, God. Come on, we got a week of evangelism for our for our college campus. We got our churches were trying to reach out in Indianapolis and Greenwood and Brownsburg. We're trying to reach out. We're trying to take our yes and give our yes feet, the hands and a mouth. I'm opening these altars. I'm asking there'd be a great response from people that would step beyond your pew. I want you to treat your pew like the seat of custom. I want you to treat, you don't have to come all the way to the altar, but I want you to move somehow. I want you to make it clear to Christ that he gets your yes today. On this September Sunday, he gets your yes.